designed to be a table saw, a panel saw, a miter saw, a crosscut saw, and a rotor table. There are a lot of accessories you can buy for the machine that's going to be even easier for you to do whatever job it is you want to do. So I'm going to start out by showing you how we basically rip cut. Rip cutting is one of the easiest things. There. This is the rip sled. This rip sled is, is obviously very heavy because it's designed to hold the saw as any stationary saw and that saw is going to stay absolutely where you put it. This is solid steel. This is designed to ride in the guide, nice and smooth. And really, what you look at this machine, exactly the same as you would a table saw. Works exactly the same way. The only difference is that the side fence stays stationary, so it'll always remain at exactly 90 degrees. And there is calibration right here to make sure it maintains at 90 degrees. What you actually do is you move the rip sled. So, to install a good quality, you want a good quality circuit or saw. Simply slides in like that. You have a back lock and you have two cantilever locks that forces the saw against the back of the sled. Once you get this locked in place, there's no way that saw is going to move. And then what you want to do, you measure your panel or boards or whatever it is you're cutting. Here we'll go, we'll say 12 inches. So I'll, I'll try and show you what I'm doing here. I come up to 12 inches, I mark right on the edge of the board. This is the way I do it. There's a variety of ways you can, you can measure. I just find I'm old school. I don't know how many of us here are old school. There is a built-in measuring um, scale on the machine. I never use it. I trust my measuring tape. So I load this in. I see my blade, I see my mark, I simply line my mark up to my blade, lock the machine, now that's not moving, that's in there solid. Make sure this is tight up against the cut fence. We have some little secrets to make your life even easier. To make sure that your sheet, all you need to do is push it through, we have this neat little gizmo right here. This is also solid steel. This machine is made in Canada, designed to last a lifetime. All I do is take this little block, put it right up against the wood. Now that wood's captured between here and the fence. It's not gonna move. So, I hate to make a mess on this nice clean carpet. Do it? Okay, let's just, to get the cord out of the way, I just kind of wrap it around and leave it like that. Then I turn the saw on. You sure I should make a mess on this nice carpet? Just like a table saw. This cut you can make it as accurate as you want. I just finished building a set of oak kitchen cabinets with this tool, and I have to say they came out perfectly. All the shelves are dadoed. The cuts are absolutely square. Now I'd like, uh, I just cut this in the other room, showing some people. I'd like to see you cut that on a good table saw. See if that doesn't get sucked down into the blade, because it probably will. It's no problem at all with this machine. The other real beauty of this is, on a table saw, things tend to kick back. I got a little scar here and a little scar here from little pieces flying off. We've all been there. I see this guy smiling. He's been there. Um, and you probably couldn't do this on a table saw. I really wouldn't want to do that. On this machine, you can. So, for any kind of cross cutting or, or ripping, very simple. Now, you might ask, and I'm surprised someone hasn't asked yet, and there's any questions, put your hand up. I love questions. Uh, 
thick a piece can you cut? You can do two and a half inches. Uh, for most things I do, I do like three quarter, one inch. I don't do much more, but you can do two and a half inches. I did a whole fence. I made a whole fence in the posts with this. I'll get into that and I'll show you how, just how cool this thing really is. Um, but one thing we do need to do is there's a distance between here and the blade and the fence. How do we get around that for cutting small boards? We have an auxiliary side fence. And all we do, we pop the side fence in, we lock it in place. Really all it is is a spacer. So now I can cut little tiny boards, okay? And you just bought a machine, right? So we're gonna give you one of these just because we like it at no charge. Actually, we sold out already, so we only have one machine left and it's a demo. Did you get a deal? I heard you did a lot of wheeling and dealing, right? Of course. Smart guy. Find a demo, get a deal. We also have this little piece here, some people asking what it is. This is basically a wood support. When you're feeding panels through, for the larger panels, you can put it here, you can put this thing anywhere. Okay, that comes with the machine. Everything's designed to slide real nice and easy. For cutting a smaller board, probably what I'd want to do is just support the board. So I'd throw this in here. There's a little lock. You just kind of lock it in place. It doesn't have to be real tight. And now, I can take a board or whatever, and I can actually cut inside that thin. You'd probably want to cut the smaller strips to the outside, but the fact is I could do it. Same exact idea we measure from on our board from there to now this becomes your side fence, right? Does everyone get that? Really easy. So then all we're going to do is we're going to put this on where we want to cut it, lock this down, and we put that through and we make the cut. I don't want to make too much sawdust here. Any questions on that little deal there? This is pretty slick. Yeah? So when you cross cut or you, uh, you rip, so yep. you use the same blade? Oh, well, you shouldn't. When I'm doing fine work, I use a cross cut blade and a rip blade. As we all know, the saw in a lot of cases is secondary to the blade. The better the blade, the better the cut. This is fine cut for ripping. I kind of use it in these demonstrations for everything, but you're right. We should really change it for the cross cutting if we want, you know, good, accurate work. However, I'm not going to do that today because I don't want to take up all your time. So, comes with the machine is a trigger lock. There's a lot of people now. You, did anyone notice this on the saw? Probably not. But, you know, it's sort of like, how do we get this thing held while I'm pushing this through? The machine comes with a trigger lock. So now we, we can do any kind of rip cutting we want. This machine is designed for full 4x8 sheets. It's also designed basically for one person operation. That's the reason for the height. You lean your sheet up against the stand and boom, you lay it on. These roller stands, I'm just going to talk one minute on the roller stands. Dave, why don't you do your little magic? These roller stands will work with any machine, obviously. Height is up to 37 inches, so you can use them with all your existing tools. Everything in this whole package is designed for portability. Um, these are what I consider the best stands on the market. Before you do that, Dave, I want to see if anyone can figure out how to close those. Is there anyone here who can figure out how to close these? How do you do it? Come on up and try it. Usually I get people on this one. Boom. Smart Alec. <laughs> These fold up to four inches. This folds up to basically about 18 inches. You throw it against the wall of your garage when you're finished. Best stands on the market. Uh, a little more expensive, but you get quality, you get real bearings. These are 16 gauge as opposed to what you get on the less expensive of 20 gauge or whatever. It's designed to last a lifetime. Any questions on the rip cutting at all? It's pretty straightforward. This basically is a table saw. The only difference is you're going to um, move the saw as opposed to the... And taking this in and out is just a breeze. That's all you do. 
So now I'm ready. I'm going to show you a little bit of cross cutting here. Take this. Take that around and show people just how heavy that is. Dave. So now we want to cross cut a panel. How many people have been in their home workshop on their big beautiful table saws? Now it's time to cross cut. I always figured, wouldn't it be a whole lot easier to move the blade rather than the pole panel? So, in addition to complete rip cutting capabilities, this tool is also designed for full cross cutting capabilities. So again, all we're going to do is take our product, we'll measure say 36 inches, We slide this through. Now what I use is little measuring blocks. I make these out of hard, I was just making them in there. Actually these are just made out of oak, so they're going to last a long time. And I just put my mark here, and I'm just going to bring the clamp down, and I know that this is the exact distance from the blade to the end of the saw, the shoe. So we can see that's the exact distance. Make life real easy. We bring that through like that, put it right on our mark, make sure it's square, clamp it down. One finger will give me 100 pounds of pressure on this, on this material. So you don't need a lot. Rule of thumb is, one finger is all you're going to need to clamp this. Now this is even slippery, slippery material, but it doesn't move. Underneath all of the clamps, for our equipment is a neoprene rubber, about an eighth of an inch thick, for two purposes. One, it holds your product very firm, doesn't move for cross cutting, and two, it protects the surface of the wood, so it's not going to scratch it or do anything. If you're working with wood, that's 100 bucks a sheet, okay? If you feel you need to, you can always put this here and this would stop any kind of movement, okay? I never use it, but you can use it. And then basically, doesn't get a whole lot easier than that. Now, how many of us have our cross-cutting needs, and we get that long board, and we lay it on one side, we mark it, lay it on the other side, get a clamp, clamp it, it go to the other side, clamp it, then it moves a little bit, you gotta go unloosen the clamp, straighten it out. This is fast, designed for production. Contractors love this because, uh, I'll tell you a little story, uh, and this is just a common story, but there was a, a house being built right down the street from us. A contractor has one of these tools, and it used to be that there's there's always seems to be the scenario that there's one cutter and two nailers when they're doing roofing or the floor or the walls or whatever. And usually the nailers are always yelling at the cutter to hurry up. So he has one of these. Now what he's doing, he's got his half inch for roofing, full four by eight sheets. He's stacking one on top of the other, putting them in, and he's cutting them. Now the cutter's yelling at the nailers, hurry up guys, I got more. Because he's getting four sheets at one time. So uh, that's how fast this is. So the other thing about cross cutting, I got to tell you another little, I love stories. Tell you another quick little story. Building a shed outside of my house. I lent a guy my miter saw. I said, well, you cut all the boards for this side and I'll cut all the boards for this side. I gave him a really nice, really nice miter saw and he's measure, cut, measure, place, cut, measure, place, cut. I lined all the boards up 10 at a time in this tool. One cut, I've got 10 boards. One more cut, I now have 20 boards. Another cut, I now have 30 boards. I'm done. He's still, I'm nailing already. He's still measure, cut, measure, cut. At the end of it, because I cut all my boards at the same time, they were absolutely perfect. They have to be here, cutting them at the same time. His were all off by an eighth of an inch. You could tell when you got more down the road because they got a little more off. This fence pops open and goes to any angle. Marked on the machine is 22 and a half actual locator holes and 45.
Now that's locked at 45. And again, if you're doing fine, fine work, you got your angle locked, you can lock that right in place and not move. But how fast you make an angle, you put that in, clamp it down. Again, just one finger, I got 100 pounds. doesn't get a lot easier than that. Now, with a miter saw, they're wonderful tools, don't get me wrong, but you're limited. You can only cut boards. This, you can come all the way to here. So you can make cabinets, you can make countertops, you can make bench top, you can make anything you want. And obviously, you get a perfect miter. This cuts, now this cut is determined by your blade. The better the blade, the better the cut. But that's, I mean, if you want to come and have a look, by all means. So it's a full miter table. You can cut, the beauty is, you can cut wide miter. So rotoring is a really big thing these days. Now if you're a cabinet maker, which I make a lot of cabinets, the capabilities of this tool are amazing when it comes to rotor. What it really is, is a giant rotor table. And the whole concept of this machine is to give you full control. Okay, so let's say that we want to build a really nice bookcase. So a bookcase is going to be about this high, right? And we want to build it professionally. I mean, we don't want to just sort of stick shelves on and nail them through because that's really ugly and that's just not professional. The professional way to make any proper shelf is to dado the shelves right into your side panels. So not only does it hold it securely, it looks professional. There's really, when I searched years ago, before this machine was invented, there's not a tool in the market you can buy that will allow you to make consecutive dados without going to the full edge on the market. Because you always want an inset. You don't want to see the end of your shelves, right? Until this tool came along. So, you'll notice we have both sides of our unit in here right now. We have these little things, and these are rotor stops. And what I do is I make measuring blocks for everything. You see, this is for this bit, comes right to the edge. So this is really easy. Dave, hold this for a sec. All I need to do, and because you're dealing with a side fence, you only ever need to measure once. So if I want shelves, so this could be eight feet high if you want, it really doesn't matter. Let's say I want to put these every 12 inches. So all I'm going to do is come on my boards. Now I've got my three marks, all I need. And I'm going to bring this through. I get my measuring block. This is going to give me the distance from here to my line. Okay, so now I know that my boards are lined up. I know my rotor bit is going to be exactly at that line and above. But because the rotors are round, I now can put this stop anywhere I want it for the shelf inside. Okay? And I lock it. I do the exact same thing on the other side. Now all I'm going to do is take my rotor. No, don't plug it in. I'm not going to. This is too noisy. So all I'm going to do is basically do this. I put my little finger here to hold this as a guide, and boom. Now I have one set of datos, right? Then all I'm going to do, this is all preset. Now you did one setup. You made only one measurement, one setup. You slide this through. You put it on your mark. Lock it down. And again, if you want to use this, just because this is $200 wood, you can always put this here. Now you're guaranteed it's not going to pivot, even though this is enough to hold it very firmly. You take your rotor, you get the drift here, right? And you go boom, so now I have one, two, I do the same thing for three. You can keep doing that all down the line before you know it, you got it. Now, they have to be perfect because you're doing mirror image. Now, if you even want to go a step further,
let's just say for a minute that this is one side, this is the back, and this is the other side. I can do the exact same thing. This is going to be a full dado because we want to inset the entire shelf. This is the one side, that's the other side. At a laid out, I'd use my measuring block, measure it again, get my rotor. Now I can do exactly the same thing. Now I'm doing a side, the back, and the other side. When you're finished for the day, and this is where this machine really shines, So now I'm all done for the day, I'm at the cottage, I'm a little tired, I've had a full day's work. I want to go home. And I don't want to spend a whole pile of time tearing down. All I'm going to do is this. Lock that in there. Now these legs have pin locks. That's why this thing doesn't, doesn't rock a whole bunch. And all you're going to do is unlock these. Pull the pins, lay it down, and we do the same thing the other side. We make this a little package now. We put that here, put this here. That's okay. Put that there. And off you go. It just doesn't get any easier than that. So this you can lean up against the garage wall. You can put it anywhere. It's portable. This is a very small tool that opens up into a very large tool and gives you full 4x8 sheet capabilities. These stands uh, sort of make up the whole system. You can use any stands you want with this. You can even use sawhorses. I kind of, I love these. These are my favorites. Um, any questions? How much is the total package worth? This whole thing right here, including the power, remote power, the angle lock, the trigger lock, the rib sled, the whole thing, and basically less than one of those little contractor saws. Any other questions? So, you know, this thing is just, like, I love this. This will fit in a, in a small minivan, uh, SUV. When you fold this up and this up, and this up the same, this is one small little package that gives you an awful lot of ability. You can take this to your cottage, you can take it to the work, job site, you can virtually take it anywhere. Any questions? Where were you 30 years ago? Well, you know what? That's a question that so many people have asked me this machine is every bit as accurate as the best tools in your workshop. And it really is going to be as accurate as you want to make it. It has calibration adjustments for your square, even calibration adjustments for the roller guides. These roller guides up and down with one finger. I mean, it's, it's the best roller system I've ever used. There's adjustments for these. These come from our facility, uh, pre-squared and pre-adjusted. But in the instruction manual tells you if, if you know you need to a year or two down the road how to check for square and how to calibrate uh, the back to forth movement as you can see there's no movement but it will pivot it's designed to pivot for the uh, the rip slip but it's adjustable if you need to down the road at some point the actual clamp will open up to three and a half inches. That's its full travel. So basically a four by four. The SRG package is designed to perform all the functions of a table saw, miter saw, cross-cut saw, panel saw, and rotor table. The SRG package includes the BT50, portable stand, rip sled, remote power switch, trigger lock, and angle lock. The SRG50 offers complete portability and will easily fit in a small minivan or SUV. The BT series, ProCut 50, and SRG50 are now available at a growing list of fine retailers. 
please refer to our website to find the store nearest you or email us sales at torontotool.com to obtain the most current list of retail locations. The BT Series are more innovative products brought to you by Toronto Tool Manufacturing. For more how-to information on the BT Series and other products, please visit us at www.torontotool.com.